I'm a fan of the original trilogy, and I think it's the best era. But have I been blinded by nostalgia in thinking that? Last episode, we went over A New Hope, and today, we're gonna go over The Empire Strikes Back. Is the original trilogy the best era? Let's find out. Last episode, I gave this analogy for A New Hope, and I'll say it here again in case you missed it. I collect the Star Wars Kenner toys. Those were made from 1978 to 1985. And even though there are modern Star Wars toys being made today that are leaps and bounds better, with their perfectly detailed sculpts, perfect paint applications, and their lifelike movement, I still think those old vintage toys made for the original movies are better. But I can recognize that I'm confusing better quality with nostalgia and a rich history. That's why I wanted to dig deep in this series and really analyze what makes the original era Star Wars movies so good or what makes them fall short of the prequel or sequel trilogies. And as we get further along in this series, compare them directly to the prequel and the sequel trilogies to really understand the eras of Star Wars further. And I hope you're gonna join me on this entire journey. So please, like this video and subscribe to the channel to explore this with me. The Empire Strikes Back, released in 1980. Critically and in fans' hearts, people have said that this is the best Star Wars movie of all time. In fact, one of the best movies of all time. This was set at a time when sequels were just money grabs. And yes, every movie is a money grab. You don't invest in a movie's production to see it fail. But in Hollywood at the time, sequels were garbage. They were made too quick without thought to the script, casting, production, and you can never catch the magic that was made in the original film. There were exceptions like The Godfather 2, and it's no coincidence that George Lucas and Godfather director Francis Ford Coppola are best friends, with Lucas even creating the character of Han Solo after Mr. Coppola. Mr. Lucas went into the creation of Empire not trying to recreate the first Star Wars, but propel the saga and story into new and unfamiliar ground. So why do we love it so much? Again, we have to remove the nostalgia lens and ask what could make the second installment of this movie better than other installments of the prequel or sequel trilogy. And let's remember this exercise. We are still asking, are the original trilogy Star Wars movies the best era? The Empire Strikes Back starts with the stakes already high. Our familiar heroes are shown on screen right in the first moments. We don't get introduced to new main story characters until well after this scene. So right there, it's a way to become attached to the characters and stories from where we left off. Lucas does a good job to try and not confuse us or start with the grand idea where we have to learn new names, struggles, or places. Right away, our characters are put in danger. They don't win. They are on the run, and this is where it gets brilliant. Our heroes get separated. And this is the most pivotal reason why Empire was so well received, while again doing its job so modestly and unassuming. It allowed us to develop the characters and not drown them in overly grand plot ideas. Luke escapes to Dagobah, and we learn more about him and his journey to becoming a Jedi from Master Yoda, who is a new character, the only new person we meet on Luke's adventure. And in a separate story, we follow the adventure of Han and Leia, who are escaping the Empire. They hide in an asteroid, get their characters developed more, they hide in Cloud City, where we meet the next new main character, Leno Carizian, and they all get their characters even more developed. Now, you might say that there were a ton of new characters. What about the Bounty Hunters, Lobot, etc.? Well, they really aren't main characters. They are plot devices. You don't learn their names. You don't really need to. They are there to up the stakes or help solve situations for the characters. The reason why Empire works so well 
is that more time was spent on developing the already existing characters while keeping the new characters to a minimum and only when it meant that they would move the story along. The main reasons for Yoda, Lando, and even the Emperor is that they help develop our main characters, period. We don't need to know where Yoda's from, his backstory. We don't need to know more about Lando other than he's from Han's criminal past. They are there to serve the story as character builders for the main characters in our story. The other reason why Empire works so well was the furthering of the villain story. In the original Star Wars, Darth Vader had minimal screen time. In The Empire Strikes Back, you start to develop the villain's plight. This is what balanced the movie so well. It kept it dangerous and also made an appeal for how human the villain was. You wanted to know more of the mystery behind the mask. He wasn't just a one-dimensional character like he was in Star Wars. He was developed as a character and given the beginnings of an arc. Going to the technical aspects of the movie, which we won't go into heavy detail because let's be honest, if you're watching this and have gotten this far, chances are you know every single detail of the technical production. The movie essentially had the same team, with only new writers and now a new director at the helm. This worked in the movie's favor because it needed new eyes to further the story which relied so much on character and soul, rather than grandiose epics. Again, it worked so unassumingly, yet it took a lot of artistry and talent by hundreds of individuals to get there. It was, yet again, lightning in a bottle, which Hollywood has tried to capture with sequels for decades now. Some are successful, but the majority try to get too big, try to capture the magic of the first film, and forget that it's the story and characters that made us watch the films for the first time in the first place. All the audience wants is to see their heroes in new situations, not the other way around, making too much spectacle of the situation, and not giving us enough time with our characters. It's why The Empire Strikes Back works. People have said it was the darker tone and more adult feel. Yeah, we can talk about darker tone all day long, but dark tone only makes sense when the characters go through struggles, and if that is disguised as tone, then we all need to watch more movies with darker tones where real characters have real struggles and aren't heroes right in the first scene that can solve everything. Join me on the next episode about the return of the Jedi as we go further in this series to answer the question, are the original trilogy movies the best era in Star Wars? To see that video, click on your screen now. As always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time.